Hello and welcome <laughs> to Ice Coach Online Live. A um, bit of a hiccup with the sound already as it went way too loud, but that's fine. We're a live show, we produce and do everything ourselves, so it's to be expected. I'm joined today with the lovely Anastasia and our special guest, Marika Baranova. Woo! Thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us, Marika. Thanks for joining us. Got a few people leaving comments already, so I'm going to start by introducing who Marika is exactly. Now, Marika was a former ISU technical specialist, and she was actually the specialist at the um, 2010 Olympic Games in the Ice Dance event. And she was also a multiple uh, time British champion, competed at Worlds, at Europeans, and Olympics, and then even spent a number of years doing shows this is pictures from her doing hot ice in the uk so yeah and as a, a last note actually um first funny story actually i used to do um i did hot ice for one year and it was at that show that i got to live an absolute dream of mine where i got to dress up as a peacock on the ice <laughs> to do a number how about that a dream come true for me. Beautiful blue feathers. Yeah. I even it have suited a feather. Me. Hashtag have standard hot me. ice costume, that. Standard yeah. hot ice costume. Classic. <laughs> Body out, feathers everywhere, falling on the ice, tripping you up when you try and skate. Um, <laughs> an experience I don't forget, let's say. Yeah. So, thanks for joining us, Marika. Um, it's a pleasure. Yeah. So, for anyone uh, watching, get your questions ready because we'll be answering some very shortly, but first we're going to go over a few funny stories we have to get things off to a light uh, start. Um, do you want to go first or shall I? Oh, you, you go first. Okay, <laughs> so I film a lot of content for Ice Coach Online and my first my funny story of the session, let's say, is, um, is what happened one day. I had three shows to do and I went into the rink to try out my new camera to film um, a skater called Julian who was on the show with me really talented guy and he was doing crazy things and I was trying to film him and scramble around this new character, this new character, this new camera, sorry. And this is um, what happened basically. He's showing me his like super cool moves, going a little bit slow and choppy, sorry. So he, this is a suicide slide apparently, if anyone was brave enough to try it. But after, I said hello to the floor and fell right over the headers. I wondered what on earth was going on. Um, but yeah, luckily I didn't hurt myself, but you know, when you've got to do three shows in the same day, I think there's a better way to start the day than uh, crashing over the board. So, um, yeah, for anyone, I could play it once again for anyone who's interested to see me uh, in action. But basically, yeah, this is what happened. I was so busy concentrating on the stop that. There you go. Right over Flying. the barrier. Good thing over you didn't the knock the light out. Yeah, it's a good job I didn't knock the light out because they are very, <laughs> very, very expensive. But yeah, so, oh so that's my story. Who's next? Um, well, I'm trying to think of one either from shows or competition. I think I'll tell another one from a show just because it's fresh in my mind. But um, one day uh, I was doing Beauty from Beauty and the Beast and the scene right before Beauty and the Beast is finding Dory and um, we have uh, a big turtle on the ice his name is Crush like from the movie and um, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah dude, exactly like from Finding Nemo and um, this one show <laughs> Crush ran out of gas on the ice and um, he got stuck there and I I'm walking toward the pod where I'm supposed to start and I'm like, oh my gosh, how are they going to get this turtle off? Like, I don't know. I, and so I started my number and he was still on the ice with me and it was the funniest thing. I couldn't stop laughing. I think it, you had to be there, but it was... <laughs> well, you could imagine <laughs> skating around on the ice with a, a giant turtle. I started you know, doing my there, spiral so. around <laughs> him. I'm like, oh my gosh, is he going to be here the whole scene? <laughs> Luckily, they got um, some of the skaters to get back on the ice and push him off. <laughs> would have been was, quite the show to watch, let's yeah, say. Yeah, <laughs> it was... It was the, it, it made my morning that day anyway. Nice, so nice. Yeah. <laughs> well, how about you, Marika? What have you got for us? Oh, well... <clears throat> Let's go. 
go with the show story because shows are always more entertaining. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we were doing a, um, an ice pantomime productions, which is um, hot ice um, during the Christmas season. And um, it was Aladdin. Um, there were a lot of really good skaters, but because it was just a pantomime, we were all doing an awful lot of, um, let's just call it sort of chorus type work, which wasn't very challenging. So we all had challenge in terms of um, maintaining focus, let's call it that. So during the break, um, I was sitting in my dressing room reading a book and it was very engrossing. And I hadn't heard the buzzer go for the second half. Um, and, it, and then I started sort of humming along with some music and realized that it was my scene. Um, oh. And so I dropped my book and ran out onto the stage um, and I still had my guards on. And luckily <laughs> the, first, the first thing that greeted me as I uh, came on to meet my line before we entered the stage was Ola Jaskalainen on one side and Nikki Scott on the other. So I was paired with like two of the tallest people in the show and they caught me and prevented me from falling over and, no and trolled way. me off at the opposite enter stage this and exit stage uh. that and then get my guards up and then carry on. And of course, you're, you're not allowed to be out of character in a show. So yes, everybody's doing all of their numbers with these sort of fans and then they're going around and like hiding their faces as they go, going ha ha ha. Uh. <laughs> you look so funny. Trying to hide their laughs. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, you're always trying to hide your laugh from the stage production manager. Oh, that yeah. could have gone so wrong, but luckily they were there to catch you. Yeah, I mean. I was so lucky that I, I wound up on my feet instead holy of on my butt. Um, but I, I owe them a big debt of thanks in that moment of loss of concentration. Uh, wow. <laughs> I mean, these these things are the stories you remember. Um, yeah. I don't have one in a show where I got on the ice with my skate guards, but I remember I'd done a, I actually performed quite a good show with Holiday on Ice, if anyone knows who they are. And it was my big moment. They announced my name, Skater Lloyd Jones, this, that, and the other. Spotlight came on me. And I went out, tripped over my toe, went on my face and just slid to the front of the ice. <laughs> got up and had to kind of do a bit of a sheepish bow and then step to the side for the next one to come out. Oh and it, my yeah, and it, you know, you had, the, you had the audience go, ooh, and make that ooh. noise, you know. And yeah, it's it very, best, isn't it? very embarrassing. I was bright red afterwards and uh, yeah, probably looked like an absolute plonker in front of everybody, you know. But, yeah. Oh no. <laughs> But, um, I think yeah. I think you're getting some questions in. I think I see someone has written in a question. Oh yeah. Bucka Lily, what do you think? Can a teenager a teenager can become a famous skater? I think that's the um, does it matter what age you start skating? Question. That's our first one of the uh, yeah. of the afternoon. Yeah, that that is, and that is um, it's an interesting question. We had a, we had the same question last week actually, and we pointed to a colleague that worked with us. Um, in shows actually and he started skating at age 16 and he went on to have a great career in mm -hmm. show skating for about 15 years before he, he retired so you know just because he started 16 as a teenager it didn't stop him from having a wonderful career in skating so exactly. that was our thoughts on it yeah um, yeah I mean it's, it's all about how you apply yourself um, there's there's windows of opportunity for training and um, while skating is usually accepted as a, an early specialization sport that doesn't mean that people who are a bit older can't catch up in a lot of different ways um, it but that's not to say that it's going to be easy to catch up it would take an awful lot of application um, but sure absolutely um, and never let anybody tell you what you can and can't do absolutely yeah that's a yeah that's a great way of looking at it sorry yes. i was also reading more questions as you explained in that and um a quick one do you guys enjoy more competitions or shows shows hands down for me i enjoy <laughs> a lot more there's no pressure people are just there to watch and enjoy and everybody's having fun doing the show um i had some of the best times of my life doing shows yeah so, yeah. yeah yeah i agree i i used to think i I mean, I loved competing. It, like I lived to compete, and uh, but once I started doing shows, it was it's it's a lot of fun. There's no pressure, and um, you still get to perform just like you do when you compete. So you yeah. What are your thoughts, Marika? Um, I was an odd one. I actually really loved the rehearsals. It doesn't matter whether it was as a competitor or as a person in a show. I find rehearsals are actually the most fun, most spontaneous time and yeah. quite often you'll do your best performances 
Um, I, I never felt like I quite skated as well in competition as yeah. I ever did in, in, in training or yeah, in rehearsal. Yeah. Um, but yeah, co competition and uh, was still a lovely experience. But um, well, let's show, just um, yeah, still. as we were talking about the show Hot Ice before. Mm -hmm. And I just would like to touch on rehearsals that you briefly mentioned. Now, for anyone wondering, hot ice rehearsals are somewhat notorious as being the most brutal rehearsal period of any show you will ever do in your life. And they've put on a great show, but you work hard to get that great show done. And we're talking 12 to 14 hours a day on the ice, six days a week for three weeks and just skating, 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 skating. It's like the ultimate weight loss plan. Well, it was for me, mm. unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> but I saw your routine. You, you, Lloyd, you were not just doing a, a, a duet. You were doing a duet with three different girls. So they got to do like a tag team. They were like, okay, it's my turn to take a breather. And now someone else picked up. No wonder you were wasting away boy yeah it, it was uh it was hard work to say the least yeah. and uh, you know by the end of the number i used to sit for two minutes just feeling like i'm gonna throw up um yeah i think you said that was the hardest uh show routine you've ever done the hardest routine i've done period i think and yeah yeah uh, every day i, I yeah. watched it and i thought what on earth did you do <laughs> to tick off the company managers so bad well, that they would subject they liked to him that. too much, that's why. Interesting. Not, inter they knew he could do it. Interesting point though, I mm. met a guy that had done it some years previous to me and he was like, nah, you drew the short straw I see. <laughs> <laughs> you had the, 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 the multiple uh, partner track. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah. Any time you get the tango number, you got to run and yeah. hide. <laughs> Um, I see. I see. Uh, Philip is asking me for video evidence. You know what? I might be able to find video evidence of one of yeah. those balls. I think the one of the bow I have Do in particular. Really? Yeah, I think I was going into a spin and I just hit the deck and uh, fall down and then get up. And you can see even the rest of the cast laughing at me. You know, so these things, these <laughs> things happen. So yeah, I'll bring some video evidence of that one next time. Yeah. Um, oh, interesting. ISU competition. How's it? Music, um, okay, copyright music. Does it work the same in ice shows? Um, that's a difficult question. Um, I can tell you in ice shows that they have to pay a lot of money to have um, any kind of music that any any music you hear, they're paying a lot of money for it, and mm -hmm. often it is cheaper to hire. Uh, someone to create the music for you than pay the royalty fees for say Coldplay yeah. and even if you just have yeah. the royalty fee to play it during the show you can't have a DVD or a video or a live feed on the internet of the shows so you have to pay even more money for it then so mm -hmm. yeah. tricky 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 subject do you know how it works with the ISU anyone because I uh, there's there's a there's a whole process that you have to go through where you find the a uh, number that identifies um, the piece of music and the artists and you have to fill in a form. Um, it, it's quite involved. Um, everybody pulls their hair out. It, like the last year was probably the first year they really knuckled down on it, as, even with national championships wow. in, in Great Britain. Um, and right every single level, all the way down to the, the littlest kids, yeah. they're having to get permission. Um, wow. Um, but it's doable, and um, as far as I'm aware, because it's not for profit, they're not charging people for using it for oh, competitive okay. skating. Yeah. It's understood that this is not a, a if anything, you're, you're losing money yeah. by wanting to skate. So you yeah, know. of course. Um, so they're not requiring um, uh, payment for that. That's good. Um, however, that might change. Yeah. You never know. Yeah. And um, if you're performing in it, let's say in an amateur show production. I think that tracks more closely because obviously you're taking ticket sales, you probably would have to pay fees. Okay. So you'd need to be careful and double check those things. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, for anyone watching as well, just a point, uh, point I want to make is um, Marika deals with this a lot because she is actually, which is a coach and choreographer now. And uh, I, will, I will go out there and I will say probably the most underrated choreographer in the scene doing, um, doing high level competitions. So, if anyone needs some choreography, you know to call. <laughs> but she actually taught me, um, coached me through a world championship in 2013, and here she is working with her current students who have just qualified for worlds. 
And she, don't, she doesn't just work with um, skaters who are competing at Worlds. She te spends time teaching adult skaters in, the, in her ice rink in London that she works at as well. And said to me before the show that she really enjoys that too. Just thought I'd bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually one of the, um, the most satisfying things to... Um, I won't say that, it, that it's not that they have low expectations, but when they achieve something, they're so pleased. Mm -hmm. um, you know, children almost expect it and sure you'll give them a high five and they're, they're delighted in their own little way, but there's there's some magic to, to the response that you see in an adult who perhaps didn't believe that they'd be able to do something and suddenly their face lights up. I, I actually can see on your chat that there's there's one of the gentlemen whose who's exact reaction I'm describing after mm -hmm. he turned a three turn and sustained a beautiful edge afterwards. You know who you are, Jose. Um, and um, his face just lit up. It's it's one of the things that makes coaching uh, adults so rewarding. Yes, yeah. I agree with that. It really is. We all love teaching adult skaters, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, I see another question coming in. Mm. What took you the longest to learn? And for me, that's an easy one. Absolutely easy. Uh, it's not a specific element, but the Golden Waltz compulsory dance with music, <laughs> two sequences, for me is hands down the hardest thing I had to do as an ice dancer. I don't know what your guys' thoughts is on that, but... I have to think about that one. <laughs> yeah, surely, well, surely a compulsory dance of some sort. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> what did you get, Marika? What, what was the hardest for you? Hardest thing I ever learned to do? Um... It's really difficult to say because uh, I, every skater has somewhere deep down inside perfectionist tendencies um, and if I ever couldn't do something I'd go away and work on it until I could do it and then I'd come back um, before I'd let anybody see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, however, I remember seeing the Golden Walls um, skated by its original uh, inventors as an original set pattern dance mm. and falling in love with it so much and how the people skated it that I kind of myself it before it became adopted as a pattern dance wow, okay. and so I kind of learned it on the slide okay. yeah um so, but that was before the steps were formalized so there's certain steps that became more refined yeah. like that god awful inside bracket for the ladies whilst the gentleman passes behind her that wasn't there in the original oh. that was two-footed oh, shoehorned um, a nice one foot section in there nice <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they do that often. Yeah. That's in the fin step too. There was never a, a one and a half rotation forward outside twizzle in, yeah. in one count in the original fin step either. Wow, okay. Yeah. Nice of them to stick that in at the well, last second. Well, you took the words, or you took my idea right out of my head because I was going to say the hardest compulsory I've been sitting here thinking about it was the fin step. And oh my gosh, the amount of times I fell on that forward outside twizzle in the beginning. Yeah, was, uh, yeah, Penelope used was, to fall on that too. Not an easy thing to do. It was so hard. It was like by far the hardest. And I have long legs, so like anything really quick for is hard for me. I find, and it yeah. just that was a that was a fast dance and very. Difficult. Yeah, I know it was tough for me too. <laughs> I have to do a chassis. Can you imagine? You know. <laughs> And it, not just a chassis, but I also had to lift my left arm up oh. as well. So I had like I had to do the two things. All well, she had to do was spin across the ice, you know. So I like, I really had it tough. <laughs> um, going back, going back to this uh, to the golden waltz for anyone watching, and you if you've ever seen it done in a world championships or major competition, and the ice dancer they come across and they're smiling and they're like this. I guarantee they've done their first sequence and they're going into the second one. They're like, oh, here we go again. Oh. And their legs are burning and they're tired. Burning. And to keep up <laughs> with the music and to just pretend it's the easiest thing in the world, despite it being very difficult, it's not easy. So, no, no. yeah, that's what is going through a lot of people's minds. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's coming out through the smile as well. You'll have little, it, that's something that you learn in shows is how to how to talk and continue to smile at the same yeah. time. I'm sure you guys know how to do that. So you know. we're, we're professionals, why, Marika, we don't Why talk. did you do that? <laughs> Just then, that edge was too steep. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. That's how we would talk all the time. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you would also see when something's hard though, when someone's trying to pretend and they got their smile, but they're like, <sighs> <laughs> you know so or we'll be like something on the ice stage right stage right yeah don't go don't skate over yeah so yeah 
That was that was actually I forgot my, the best ever story about um, bad show experiences. I'm sorry to digress, and we will answer people's questions. Yeah, we'll, um, we'll we were to. doing a, 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 a tribute to Torval and Dean's Bolero in That's front funny. of the being launched at Ooh. a dock on plastic ice, mm. oh and because um, Princess Anne was present, the horse riding um, exhibition just before we that something drew back across the stage and then it was me and Vitali. <laughs> As the stage drew back, the wheels on the stage drew a load of horse manure Ooh. across <laughs> one set <laughs> corner of oh. the ice cream. And uh, it was plastic ice. And we knew that that was where we were gonna have to do the famous ba da ba ba da ba da ba <laughs> Just slide across the ice right through it. <laughs> so we were doing a combination of the smile and do the eyes and have you seen it? And where are we going to finish it instead? And we're doing all of this last try. And later on, we found out that Jane Torval was also in the audience. It really made my day. Oh my God. Oh, wow. Okay. I mean, that's a. Uh... <laughs> I might have to get creative with that one. Just to top it all off. <laughs> wow. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. <laughs> um, do I prefer spins, jumps, lifts, or footwork? I like doing lifts. It's what I do in shows now with Anastasia. Not a big fan of jumping myself. My knees aren't big fans of me jumping. Um, and I like doing lifts because you lift a girl up, Audience goes crazy. So mm -hmm. great crowd pleaser move, really. Um, yeah. I don't know. No, I agree. I was never a very good jumper. I only like got my axle and double sow, and I was, yeah. So I started to dance quite young, and I, I think I always really enjoyed um, lifts in yeah. competition and in shows, and just um, yeah, I prefer that over jumping or spinning. <laughs> um, before I before I cut. Um, go to Marika's favour. I did want to share something that she shared with me before. Mm. And I think you said it was the highlight of your competitive career, is that right? Um, yeah. The, yeah. Yep, so she shared was. with me the moment in competition that was, was just it for her. And it was at the Olympics and she did an opening lift. And I hope you can hear this and I hope it doesn't stutter too much because if you can hear the crowd, it's suddenly very intense. You can hear the roar. So this is the Olympics going into the opening lift of their free dance. Wow. Really cool lift. And I hope you can hear it. If you couldn't, you can check it out. Um, you can find the video online on YouTube and you can hear the crowd really goes crazy. And so yeah, I just thought I'd show that video. It's like a show-stopping <laughs> lift. It was, uh, we were both so full of adrenaline that that day that when, uh, normally when Vitaly threw me, the, there's a sense of, it always bar once worked, but on that day, it just felt like I stayed up there forever, and <laughs> I, I was like, when am I coming down? I, oh I know gosh. you can see it, but it's almost like in, it went in slow-mo for me in reality, yeah. but popping out the other side and doing that big hand gesture was just, um, I guess the sound to me was similar to, let's say, footballers would relate it to scoring a goal at Wembley yeah, or something. Yeah. That was how loud it was, and it was just, everything and then suddenly oh no that's only my first move <laughs> <laughs> adrenaline dump yeah <laughs> yeah adrenaline dump but um it was still the most fantastic experience and the audience stayed really warm all the way through because they'd been watching a lot of beautiful lyrical programs beforehand but this was the first lively routine they'd seen all day so they were yeah really well, enthusiastic <laughs> and that was at salt lake city so i i'm not sure what the altitude is but for anyone wondering when you do a, a skating Hi. performance up high it is difficult and i think the the only time i ever saw so to start the story where i should have started it originally if you take a skater like charlie white who was a cardio machine when he was performing the only time i saw him look tired at the end of a free dance was at salt lake city uh, after his, his, you know, he'd done his free dance. He didn't show it during the performance, but at the end, you could see he was exhausted. And skating at altitude is brutal. Yeah. Yeah. 
So I, I've also competed you. there, and it was like the hardest for you to yeah. do. Yeah. yeah, it was my first year senior too, and I think I just had like a random sectionals there. Yeah, and um, my God, it was hard. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when I whenever I've done it in altitude, I'm I'm sat there and I'm like, oh, here we go, because you know it's gonna be hard. Like yeah. you, you you don't live at altitude. You just you don't mm. go in there. You're like, mm -hmm. no matter how you prepare, it's gonna be tough. Mm -hmm. I, I I wish I'd known as a skater, what I went on to study after um, finishing competing, I, I, I took part in a, um, a applied sport exercise science degree and um, we learned about high, no, yeah, live low, train. No, no live train, high, train low. That's the one, sorry, <laughs> I'm, I'm just like reaching here. Anyway, the fun part was I eventually, as a coach, I had to take a, a junior team to Mexico City, Ooh. which is notorious, extraordinarily one high. And yes. um, one of them was an asthmatic. So we had a really fun whereby we set up um, an altitude tent in the living room and the kids would come and um, they'd sit and do their homework in the altitude tent yeah. um, and watch the TV and do stuff and they, they prepare themselves and, and I'm so glad they, they did um, because we avoided what would have been like much, much worse consequences for them. They, yeah. they managed and, and they, they held their heads up, which is wonderful to be able to say as a coach, but it was really odd to see them like in this little plastic bubble and yeah. they'd be, can we go higher? Can we go higher? I want to go to the top of Kilimanjaro. <laughs> push the button, push the button. <laughs> push the button. <laughs> oh, that's cute. <laughs> Yeah, Me I've never skated in Mexico City, but I've heard the stories from fellow skaters and how yeah, if, if anyone's competed there, they will guarantee tell you it was the hardest competition yeah. of their life, yeah. you know, or show even. Um, for anyone watching right now, smash up the likes if you're enjoying our little chat here, um, and we're going to answer some more questions. So let's go on There's to the loads of questions now, aren't there? Yeah, we will. Coming in. We're going to work our way through, them, yeah. yeah. Um, what for... Oh, what's your favorite music to skate to? I love skating to a nice, fast, lively music, but it's also very, very, very hard work. You have to do a very long program like it. So sometimes it can be nice if you have a show to do, to have a nice, a slower piece to try to get you into the ice and enjoy, warm you up a little bit, and then go for the crowd stopping, lively, fast one as the second piece. That's my take on it. Mm. <laughs> Not bad. Yeah. yeah, I always liked skating to Latin music. That was like my favorite. It just Latin or or tangos. Um, Paso was always fun, but yeah, that was my that was my jam. I was able to like nice perform Latin my one. best. Yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. What about you, Marika? What was what's your go-to? Um, well, I was always very eclectic. I uh, um, started life as a single skater, and I was very into my classical music. Mm. Um, but as an ice dancer, um, I'm gonna have to. Pin, pin it on a tango, um, tango. why tango? Um, it's because well, it was the dance that my husband and I had to, we were paired together in hot ice to do it and we spent the season dancing the tango and by the end of it, we decided we'd get married. Oh, <laughs> how romantic. Yeah, so sweet, that's oh, I awesome. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just stuck with you since, yeah, yeah. that's nice. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Aw, that's really um, sweet. Is it possible for adult skaters to compete in serious competition, and if it is, at what level would it be appropriate to be in one? Um, Marika, do you want to feel this because I know you have uh, a lot of experience teaching adult skaters? Sure. Um, okay, so there is um, a specific branch for adult skaters, um, which goes right through to that there are ISU events specifically for and age categorized as well. Um, so. Um, you can you can be in the bronze at a certain age category or the silver at a certain age category and then there's even elite masters which is you know retired elite skaters coming back but if if that's the case then they're obviously in their category so it would never be unfair you wouldn't get a a, a 35 year old who took up skating as an adult who's bronze competing against someone who's a former Olympic champion or something. Mm. So it's re it's really nice and, and the, the ambiance um, at these events, I know there's definitely one in Oberstdorf that's um, held annually or has been for quite a number of years and I'm sure there's one yeah. stateside as well but I can't remember where, is that Lake Placid or... Um, 
but there's very big scene and it, it's um, very competitive. There are artistic events as well as technical mm-hmm. ones, and everyone brings their A game. It's they're really good events. Um, in Great Britain, you would usually do some of the national events first to prepare yourself, and then um, and then everyone bands together and off they go to Oberstdorf. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've heard from a, a few adult skaters in my local ice rink actually that competed there that just said that the feeling and the atmosphere there was just uh, amazing, you know, and it's what they, they almost all of their training throughout the year was just leading up to this with this one event that just made everything worth it, you know, in, in the practice. So yeah. um, something definitely worth pursuing for people, I think. Yeah. Absolutely. And that there's a lot of pride in how people put themselves out there as well. So it's not just oh well, it's it's just so so competition. They everybody who's competing, they they really are taking it seriously and, and pushing themselves to be their best. And um, so it's a it's a really fun event and a really, you know, people are taking it serious. Absolutely, you know? <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of talented adult skaters out there. Yeah, it's there a very are, yeah. competitive like, uh, mm. you know, yeah. route. Yeah. So. For any of you, was ice dance your first choice as couple skating, or have you also done or would have liked to do pairs? Um, I went straight into ice dance personally. Um, it's funny because what we do now in shows is closer to pairs than it is ice dance, um, and I can say I really enjoy I really enjoy it. So maybe I maybe I should have done pairs skating. Is that is that a way of saying I missed the boat on that one? I don't know, but. Um, yeah. I was, well, if your knees didn't like jumping, then Adagio is, is, you, you can you still do the couple spins work and the impressive lift work, but you don't have the pressure of the jumps on your on your knees and your joints. Yeah. Um, exactly. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's no, yeah, jumping, jumping isn't for my knees, mm-hmm. you know, I want to, it's not worth destroying my knees to mm-hmm. do the jumps, you know, there's more I can do in skating, the sport has more to offer, fortunately, so yeah, yeah plenty of things to do. Yeah. Um, let's see, there's an old, okay, this is perfect for you to answer, Marika, um, as an adult skater, is it worth taking the Nissa tests? Mm. Ooh, okay, um, well, like with most things, um, to be officially, uh, assessed gives you something that, you know, you, you will own forever. You will, you will know. I'm definitely. Good. It's like saying, well, you can drive. Is it worth taking your driving test? Um, so there, there are certain things that you can't do unless you've taken your tests. So, for example, some competitions may require you to have achieved a certain test level before you're permitted to enter. Um, just as you won't be allowed to enter the mainstream roads until you've passed your driving test. Yeah, <laughs> yeah okay. That's a good way to. Um, put it. But you can, you can still be a fantastic driver or skater and never have taken your test. The difference is you just won't get to go out and show your stuff necessarily in competition or on the main road. It's an interesting one because I think it, it is quite a lot of money to take the tests as well. So it's mm. when, you know, it, it also depends as to what your goal is. Do you, yeah. do you, do you want that certificate that says I've done this or do you want to get on the ice and, and just skate and people say, wow, you know, that person, they, they can skate. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, that's it's an interesting point. I actually do have one uh, adult gentleman, different gentleman, um, that I've been coaching a number of years, and, and he was fascinated with, and I think his, his line of work is in something to do with engineering. Mm-hmm. He was fascinated with all aspects of controlling his blade, moving through space, yeah. and he's actually very adept at many different steps and turns, loops, brackets, counters, rockers, sometimes he hits them with really excellent edges and I think I've, I've said to him before, would you consider doing a test and he, he doesn't, he's just not interested yeah. and that's absolutely fine because when people watch him skate and then see me working with him as a coach, I've had an awful lot of people come to me and ask me to come skate so his enjoyment is the greatest advertising. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a, I think that's a good one. I mean, it's, I mean, I certainly, I haven't done tests for years. You know, it's like, you know, I, at a certain point you stop doing tests. You, you know, that that ended for me when I was, I don't know if I was 15 or something. But there's so much I've learned since then that there isn't an official test for. But even though I passed all the tests up to this level, I was maybe 20% of the skater I am today. So, you know, it's. 
yeah, it's, it's, there's the, yeah. The, the tests run you through your foundation skills and that's a, a very um, ideally should cover absolutely everything um, currently the Nash, the British test system actually misses a few brackets off the menu um, it teaches you every other turn but there are a few brackets missing oh really <laughs> well, did um, not important mm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, but um, that said, once you've learned to do them and learned to control them in a basic way, what you're describing, Lloyd, is, is when you really want to finesse that and then skate it with ex excessive speed and then in unison with another person, the level of control goes up exponentially. It's like, okay, so you passed your driving test, but you want to be part of a stunt driving crew, you're going to have to get better, you yeah, know? Yeah. And that's exactly what you're going, you went through um, in those years, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Well put. Yeah. Um, this is um, an easy and a little stupid question. What is Stasia Lloyd and Marika's favourite colour or favourite figure skating move? I can answer the favourite figure skating move quite easily, actually. I love doing a bank spin where you hold the girl by the ankle whip around like an Olympic hammer throw, but then put her down gently and let everybody in the audience go, oh, oh, they're fine. <laughs> I like doing it because at the end of a good number, it whips the audience into a frenzy and is almost guaranteed to get everybody jump up on their feet. Yeah, um, the crowd loves that one. Everybody loves that one, except for Stasia's mum. I don't think she likes watching <laughs> me scooter around in such a way. Yeah, she gets so nervous. Well, it, it's that moment when you see the girl's head kind of going like this more and more and more as they're trying to avoid their head meeting the floor. Yeah. yeah, puts everyone on the edge of their seat, you know. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I remember we did a bounce spin for like one of those scout clinics that we did one time after a show yeah. at Disney. Yeah. And someone, our friend, was filming it for us behind an elderly lady watching and um you know the elderly woman just went like you could see her hands going like oh my goodness and she just yeah freaked out yeah. and it was funny because our friend got that on video yeah you could like, see oh, her no. like this <laughs> not wanting to yeah, walk yeah. and kind of yeah so just giving her a heart attack but it oh, yeah <laughs> yeah you know but um yeah no it is it is a good one sounds yeah good. Well, what about you marika what do you like doing um, well, when I was first skating, um, anybody who knew me would tell you that I practically wore holes in the ice from spinning. I loved s spinning, uh, everything to do with turning, spinning. I saw some skaters who were better than me uh, at our home rink doing layback spins, and that was all I ever wanted to learn to do. Um, I mean, I still love every aspect of rotation, so God, I love twizzles. Twizzle. Um, I love seeing people do them well. Um, it's hysterical when people get them wrong and fall over. You know, I see the funny side of <laughs> the humor of it going wrong. I also know the tragedy of getting it wrong if you're the skater as well. It's devastating to your marks. Um, favorite moves though, um, I love a, a good Charlotte spiral. You know, when somebody hits a spiral and then really holds it with the music, yes. or like on maybe very emotional music and they just hold it. Yes. Um, so any move where someone really feels the music and makes you feel it the way they do. Yeah. Yes. Those are my favorites. It draws you that, in. That's what I always strived for. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, oh, my, nice. my goal was always, if I was skating to sad music, I want to make you cry. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, that's the appropriate yeah. emotion for it. You wouldn't want that's everyone with a big beaming smile on their face to yeah. some sad emotional music, you know? Yeah. If they had that, it'd be because they skated over the barrier like I did in our opening <laughs> video. <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've all had moments, haven't we? Um, what competitive program from different skaters you like so much that you would like to skate yourselves? That is a mm -hmm. really tough question yes. because there's a lot of so, skating programs I've really liked over the years. Um, I'm a bit stumped to be honest. Have you got anything? Anyone? Eureka? Sasha? I have to give it a good think. Oh my gosh. I mean, I always admired like if I think really hard, like Tanith and Ben's, um, one of their, I think it was uh, their flamenco program. Cause again, I like, you mm. know, I like Spanish music and- um, It just spoke to you a lot that It one. did, it did. And I, and that was, I always looked up to Tanith and Ben, you know, that era of, you know, those ice dancers. And 
I, because um, that was when I was about, you know, juvenile or intermediate and... Um, that was a generation yeah. of your idols, basically. Exactly, yeah. exactly. I must have been... And, that, and that's the time when you're most like a sponge, you know, you're, you're looking, you're looking for inspiration yes. and these people, are, are, they're just like a, a stream of like everything that you want to be. Exactly. So you're, you're a, yeah, literally a sponge at that stage exactly. and, and everything is, oh, yeah. it's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So I and I just remember seeing that program and I'm like, oh, I really want to. That's what I want to do, you know, and that's what I wanted to skate yeah. to. And yeah, so Tanith and Ben's flamenco program. There <laughs> is a quite an interesting question for you here, Marika. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. And it's going to be interesting because I have a feeling that you didn't watch it when you were there in the way that they're thinking. Uh, what do you think of Tessa uh. and Scott's <laughs> performance in the 2010 Olympics in terms of technicalities and performing? Okay, um, well, technicalities, I was all over that. <laughs> but the performance... <laughs> um, yeah, uh, when, when we're watching on a technical panel, um, how we go about making sure we're assessing things and as fairly as possible, we're, we're paying attention to key areas. Um, so let's say, for example, you think a bit like someone with a camera zoom and um, if we're watching step sequences, then we're just zooming in on the feet of the edges. If we're watching lifts, we, we zoom out because we need to see all the contact points and how things are changing and the angles. Is it a split? Is it, you know, is the ring closed? Is, is the hold changing? Mm -hmm. So, um, like you said, that the sense of the performance is a little harder for us to, to really gather. Um, However, when people are exceptional, and there were a number of exceptionally good performances, and I say good, it doesn't really do them justice. There were some really excellent performances in the ice dance event, and you couldn't help but feel the waves, even though you knew, and, and it, was, it was so important to focus that you kept reminding yourself of why you were there. Every time before I started a program, I know why I'm, I'm not here to enjoy this. I'm here to make sure that these people yeah. get the all the points that they deserve. I think that's yeah. really important to know about a technical yeah. specialist from my point of view as well is it's about, I want to give you all the points that you deserve. I don't want to miss a thing to make sure that you get what you have worked for yeah, uh, and what you've delivered on the day um, and to make that as fair as possible anyway. Sometimes people might think, oh, they're there to take yeah. points away from me, but actually, we're on the we're trying to give i can um, imagine something really hard though to watch uh, someone skate and you know because i've been doing shows for a while it's much more easy for me to sit and watch now and just enjoy the performance mm -hmm. for the things mm -hmm. i like in it um, but sitting there and just focusing purely on the technique is, is like it must take some training to really zone in on that and I, I know you used to train technical specialists for the isu so is that something that you would focus on with them is how to tune in yeah exactly so we we would um work with the um, the new recruits uh, and they, they would all be ex have some experience in in house at uh, in their home nation first before they came to start the isu training um but yes teaching people how to observe how to be most effective and then training them up on accuracy speed uh, and also communication skills because not you're not always going to get full agreement across the panel about what you just saw. Yeah. Um, so if there are any disagreements, you have to. And it's so hard because not not everybody English is their first yeah. language. Yeah. Right. Um, and I am always in awe of the the specialists who are working in in their second or third language. It's amazing. Yeah. I mean, if I had to be a technical specialist in Russian, I mean, I wouldn't have even <laughs> gone anywhere near the exam. Yeah. You know. So. Uh, always remembering you know to speak clearly and concisely um but yeah i mean it, it tessa and scott's free dance at that and the audience reaction i mean you couldn't you couldn't miss it like in those like the final moments all of the technical stuff is done and and you just finally let yourself enjoy those last few yeah. moments and it was it was magical i think from a, a personal standpoint i would say flawless would be the word I would use for it. Really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Deserved win, you know? Um, <clears throat> I don't know your thoughts on it, but yeah, really loved it. From the 2010 Olympics? Yeah, 2010. 
I think Mary yeah. and Charlie. It was a, it was a 2010. No, it was, oh, that's right. They had that yeah, Mary Lagoon that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. White. 2014 yeah. was Mary and Charlie. The Phantom of the Opera that's free right. dance from Mary and yeah. Charlie. That's right. I mean yeah. that. The, the Phantom of the Opera free dance was amazing too, yeah. and it had so much originality in it. It was dynamic. It was theatrical, yeah. in an appropriate way, still sporting. Um, it on any other day of the week, it it would have probably won but just there was just something and and even just yeah. watching as a technical specialist not not even thinking about the technical part there was just something and my, my coach used to do this <laughs> and I never knew what she was talking just, about um, you know <laughs> and then and then I had this aha moment where I went that's what that yeah, means yeah. <laughs> I think um, with Marilyn Charlie's program, I was watching it after Worlds. I think they won Worlds after, and yeah. I remember I was watching their opening lift in that routine, and I was sat, and all the pair skaters around me who had finished their event, and they did their opening lift, and they just sat there and just went, that's ridiculous. That lift is just, that's ridiculously hard. That's harder than anything we do. That's just, that's ridiculous. And that, there, there was the unanimous dis like discussion between the pair skaters was how insanely difficult their lifts were mm -hmm. yeah. and that's the funny thing is that because i stance lifts aren't full arms extended above the head a lot of people assume that they're not as difficult or physically challenging but in actual fact once you're fully extended with the, i'm not saying that pairs lifts aren't difficult but there's a difference in terms of the skeletal support versus the muscular support and and i stance lifts are so muscularly involved I and mean, pairs lifts have changed <laughs> in terms of the eggs are more demanding now than they used to be but i mean every single figure skating discipline has grown and changed and evolved so much um no no one discipline deserves to be labeled as ah oh, that's the easy one and i include single Synchro in that synchro is not easy yeah. either, and they're yeah. including lifts and dangerous maneuvers, and it's it's amazing when you watch the top teams. There was a I was commentating on a Steel City Trophy mm. um, earlier in the year, and there was a Russian junior team, and they did synchronized in a block, and this is not not a lot of space between them in unison illusions, which are like oh a, a camel spin, one revolution, yeah, where the leg goes right mm -hmm. up and right down. And they were in perfect unison. Wow. Nobody got decapitated. <laughs> <Thankfully>. Nobody got <laughs> booted in the face. And I That's was really hard, just isn't it? stunned. Yeah, yeah it, it really, really hard. Yeah. And there was some other, st I think they did counter, counter illusion. Wow. <laughs> just to top That's it yeah. incredible. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Mm. The amount of hours of work to get that in perfect unison is, is crazy. And to just do it by yourself w without worrying about anyone else is hard enough. And then you've got to, you know, have many other people all doing it with you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to fess up. I got back on the ice afterwards and I gave it a try and I went, yeah, that was yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely a challenge. Yeah. Um, guys, if you're still watching, Throw us a few more likes if you're enjoying this live chat. It means a lot to us to let, if you let us know that you're enjoying the discussion. And we're going to move on to the next question that says, if you passed gold but never competed, I'm an adult, are there competitions for my level? Um, we were discussing that earlier, that there is for pretty much every level there's something, right, Marika? So. Yeah, um, so uh, when they say gold, I'm assuming that you're let's say in the UK and we're talking about Skate UK gold. Um, which is the last um, Skate UK level before you start launching into national test system. Um, but there are competitions out there. I know, um, for example, if you're based down in the, the, the south, in the London region, there's the London Adult Figure Skating Club. They'll often um, host uh, competitions for every category, right from literally just exiting the Skate yeah. UK gold. Um, and they'll do artistic events or technical events as yeah. well some with music, some without, um, whatever people want to enter into, they, it's possible to find an event. Um, if you don't have a coach, you can make inquiries with perhaps the head coach at your rink. Um, they might be able to supply you with information. Alternatively, on Facebook, search for London Adult Figure Skating mm. and um, you'll come up with a, 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 a large community of, uh, of very enthusiastic adults who all want to get out there and uh, obviously they're they're all suffering right now with yeah. the closures too but i know they have 
uh, events planned on a semi-regular basis. Oh, awesome! That's Something amazing. to get involved with, and yeah. with the adult events, uh, is it Skater Girl has left a message that says Oberstorf is the absolute best adult competition. So there you go, someone endorsing what we've been telling everybody. How about that? Are there any exercises that you hate and why? Mm. Uh, there's plenty that I don't like doing actually, <laughs> but to yeah. think of it off the top of my head, what would they be? <laughs> any ideas? Do you have some you really despise? Oh. Anything going from a, a, let's say, a backward outside rocker straight into a twizzle on the same foot is an absolute nightmare, and I used to hate doing mm. that in Lyon when they used to make us do it. It's very awkward if anyone yeah. wants to give it a whirl. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it depends on the, the rotational direction of the turn that precedes the twizzle. Yeah. You can either help yourself or really hinder yeah. yourself. Counters are much better than rockers, aren't yeah. they? Yeah, I've heard a, a I quick, do like um, yeah. a quick story. I did a show, right? And there was Stefan Lambiel <laughs> in the show, and his choreographer was the choreographer of the show. And every time there was some footwork, she would turn to Stefan. Well, we'd be struggling, <laughs> and she'd turn to Stefan. She'd say, Stefan, can you try this? Is this possible? And he would, he would give it a go and he'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah I can do that. And, we, and she'd say, okay, perfect. Okay, guys, this is the step then. And I'd think, well, yeah, of course Stefan can do it, but not all of us can, can do what Stefan can do. Perhaps, He's too you know, yeah, perhaps make it a little easier for some of us, you know? <laughs> you ask yeah. one of the best skaters in history to give mm. it a go, you know? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I don't like any exercises with like open chalk toss. I have very closed hips, so like yeah. open chalk toss and spread eagles are hard for me. So. Anything with mm. it. But then you'll do a nice big spiral and a Yeah, and a spiral thing like I that. can do. <laughs> I probably would list spiral under the category of I'm less a fan of, personally. <laughs> you know, used to be better at them. Maybe need to work on them a little bit. Mm. <laughs> um, um, let's just say. Uh, is there really no knee friendly? single dance competition uh, I mean, category. skating isn't too friendly on the knees, but that doesn't mean there isn't exercises you can do off the ice in order to strengthen and rehab and balance the muscles out around your knee and actually make them better. So um, if your knees are hurting, you should consult a physio, in my opinion, and work with them on balancing yeah. everything up, and then you can participate in the sport safely. I mean, the things yeah. that are gonna hurt you are doing quad jumps and triple jumps and that, but you know, you don't have to attempt these kind of jumps to enjoy the sport of skating. So, you That's know, get in, get in touch with a physio and that would be my advice, you know. Yeah. And I mean, there are solo dance categories as well. So if yeah. you're really not enamored with, um, with jumping at all, um, per se, Say it's possible to do ice dance but without a partner mm -hmm. um, it's very popular in fact it is some yeah. people prefer to do it uh, that they are dancing by themselves um, also it's very difficult to find uh, a dance partner that's the right height the right age yeah. the right standard um, if you're going to compete however there's also social dancing um, which is fantastic it's something that we're doing a lot more of in or had been doing a lot more of in Lee Valley before the closure yeah. um, so we're building a, a kind of a community of social dance where everybody knows the pattern dances and then you can dance it with anyone you can dance it with another girl another guy a girl and a guy and then a different guy and it's wonderful you learn so much through nice. dancing with a, a big variety of people it's that actually like how so I grew fun. up yeah. learning about ice dance yeah. Yeah. have you have your coffee have a you know sip of coffee and go dance uh, sounds it does sound like fun oh the fun, wonderful yeah. thing is we we had people who did like it was like great british bake off as well people had brought cake oh, and okay. i was like wow i get to do all the things i love <laughs> i get to dance and eat yeah, cake amazing. <laughs> i love that that's a nice touch to the to the um, to the event i think you know yeah um, Look at this, shout out to Mr. Tongi LePay watching. Hey, stay, uh, hope for you're doing sure. well during the lockdown. Hope you're doing well too, sir. For anyone yeah. wondering who on earth is Mr. Tongi LePage, if you follow us on Instagram at Ice Coach Online, you will see you will see a chap doing backflips and some very unusual um, kind of star hitch kick butterfly combinations and things like that. And that is actually oh, wow. the very talented Tongi from France. So yeah. uh, wow. thanks for watching the show. Give us a like if you want. And thank you for you, letting me film you and put videos of you on our Instagram. It was a great help for me. So yeah, <laughs> random question. How female skaters usually prepare warming up, stretching, and dress up before a program? Were you in a rush? 
Yeah. Um, <laughs> I will let you two answer that because I don't think I qualify for the question. <laughs> oh my god. For anyone that knows me, um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I, I was always in a bit of a rush before a, a show. A bit of a rush. <laughs> Tom um, B's probably laughing if he's yeah, still Tom watching. Yeah, Tom B's probably laughing his butt off right now. No, um, I think for like a morning show, you know, when you're kind of strolling in and, um, you know, you're a bit groggy, it's the morning, it's early, and you, you have to do your warm up because you don't want to escape, you know, with cold muscles and, you know, pull a muscle or something. And then, you know, you have to get your makeup done, hair done, all of that. And normally we'd come into the venue Mm, like an hour and a half before a show so and then by the time we walk in and kind of get everything sorted you, you have an hour to get ready so yeah I was I was always in a bit of a rush <laughs> I take my time with my makeup and I mean I learned how to do it faster but uh, <laughs> but she was I, she never I, missed a number no bar that mm. one time when you definitely did miss a number <laughs> but apart from that one time she never missed a number oh my god you're throwing me <laughs> under the bus here it was I missed I missed the beginning of opening. The opening of one show. The opening of one show. Oh my god! But I, I didn't miss the whole thing. It just, just the flag work in the beginning, and then, and then I came out. But yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so we like Serious the flag slap on the, the wrist, yeah. my company manager. Oh yeah. Oh my yeah. lord. He uh, was yeah, just a little bit. He was not happy. A little bit to miffed, say the least. I would say. Yeah. I was surprised he didn't like. He he didn't react as badly as I thought he would, but. Maybe yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Marika? How would you say for that question? Oh, well, it's all about time management. So if you know how long you normally take to get ready, you just work <laughs> back from there and make sure you arrive. I mean, um, uh, if whether it's, you'd start getting ready in the hotel, you arrive yes. with your makeup already on, yes. um, you know, so all those kind of things. But yes, shows you do tend to get a little bit um more relaxed about things and sort of run in last minute and and of course you get fined if you don't have your false eyelashes on you get fined if you don't have your nails painted the right color we used to have a workaround for that one which was uh, sticky uh, sticky electrical tape cut to the shape of uh, fingernails <laughs> oh, that's so we brilliant. just stick them on there you go <laughs> wow that's okay brilliant. nice <laughs> I like that. Shh, don't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to use that hack. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we'd like to a couple more questions, so we'll just jump through a few because mm. we've got to start wrapping things up soon. Um, yep. This is a really good one, I think. Is it possible for adult skater to land double axel consistently or is it a bit um, of unusual? Uh, Marika, perhaps you can shed some light on, on that one. Wow, well, it's all about preparing your body um, for the challenge that lies ahead. So as we get older, um, depending on how our training has been when we were younger, and that doesn't necessarily mean as a figure skater, it's dependent on how much uh, fast twitch and slow twitch fibers you have, um, how much orientation training you've done. Um, so the answer is really, it's all about it's all about the training that you do and how consistently frequency of training uh, how many times in a week are you going about training your double axle or whether it's we have been known as a dancer but between dance partners i uh, when i was younger i did actually go through learning double axle and land it um, with the help of some friends and a coach and um, but most of the time I spent learning it off the ice and when I eventually got on the ice on the fifth try I landed it Wow! Um, yeah. so yeah uh, so that's partly to do with spinning orientation the fact that I liked to be turning and had a good sense of myself um, I didn't have exceptionally fast twitch as I was trained in ice dancing mm. so it was more about making sure that I'd walked through it, walked through it, jumped through it, Repetition. jumped through it, had a clear picture in my head and then get on and then do it. Uh, but that's just my personal experience. Is it possible as an adult? I'm pretty darn sure it mm. is. There are some fantastic things you can learn to do as an adult. It's all about you know, your your sense of self and how brave you feel to do it. Yeah, it's a really interesting point you were saying about learning it though off the ice because it's a lot um, it's what we've been stressing a lot um, on this channel in our videos is that just because the ice rinks are closed it doesn't mean you can improve and in and in some cases if you do the right exercise working on specific things you can actually get on the ice better than you were 
before the ice rink closed. And yeah. obviously, if you just sit on the couch, slap Netflix on, <laughs> drink beer for the next four months, you'll get back on the ice and you'll be back to square one. But with the right work, you know, consistently, you'd be amazed at how yeah. much better a skater you are when you go back onto the ice. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Sometimes having the ice rink open all the time allows you to get distracted from the off-ice work that you should be doing to improve your body, improve your physicality yeah. um, in order to become a better skater. It's tempting to just think that all happens on the ice, but what's wonderful about, if you can call it wonderful, about I view this as an opportunity for my, my skaters as well is to learn how important the off-ice part of your training is because you are an athlete. You're a mm -hmm. skating athlete. Now, just because you're not skating at the moment does that not mean that you're not going to be athletically training yourself, mm -hmm. training your body to get ready for when those doors open again. Yeah, yeah, that's a great, I mean, it's a great really way of looking at it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I 100% uh, agree. Mm -hmm. um, how did you know when it was time to move on from competitive skating? Mm -hmm. I didn't enjoy it anymore. Easy. <laughs> that was that's the best way I can put it. Um, what about you? Um, I think I personally stopped competing a bit earlier than I wanted to. I think I was like 20. Oh, how old was I? 23 when I did my last. Yeah, my last nationals. And I think it was just that my partner and I had split up, and it was hard for me to find a new one. And. You know, I, I, I've had a few different partners throughout my competitive career, but never had a break between any. And I think at that point, after not competing for a year, I was like, okay, you know, it's probably time to move on. And, and I knew, like, you know, when I didn't find a partner within the first couple months of um, me and Ian splitting mm -hmm. up, I think I just realized, okay, it's, it's time to move on. I'll try giving shows and coaching a try, and um, yeah, and I went from there, and I ended up really enjoying it. So I was, I was glad I did. And then she met me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it all worked out for the better. How about I, you, Marika? <laughs> That's it. When did you know? Um, oh gosh, um, it's difficult because it, it was so. Uh, my career was has been so fluid in terms of what aspects of. Uh, skating I've been involved in so even when I was competing with um, Philip Askew who was partner number two I am a serial ice dancer yeah. um, was um, I was already coaching voluntarily uh, a synchro team mm. which I'd started because a club who were quitting skating or on the verge of it and they were very similar age to me sort of young teenage middle teenage but they still wanted to enjoy their skating so I'd nick up every um, weekend from London and go and coach them on a Saturday night from 10.30 till midnight and then come back down and train myself uh, with Phil. So um, I I've been between coaching and competing for so long that it didn't ever really feel like a full stoppo, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. Um, even, even meeting Vitaly was done between partners, so I did a bit of a show and then came back. So it's been a very strange loop-de-loop. -loop. Mm -hmm. And um, well, for anyone wondering as well, when you have been doing shows and not competing, going back to competing is quite a, a challenge. You know, that first free dance run through, I imagine, was not the most fun you've ever had in an ice rink, Marika. I'd go on limb and say that, but it is very tough to get back into that regimented training um, after coaching and shows. Um, I believe. <laughs> yeah, well, we we were odd because we actually did it at the same time. We were skating in hot ice and training three days a week in Blackburn, um, and then at the end of the show season, we did the British. Yeah. Oh wow. wow! Which was like, yeah, yeah it was, short it was unheard of. I, <laughs> That's incredible. It was a very short turnaround. Yeah. The wonderful thing was Hot Ice let us have the costumes. They they made our costumes oh. for that season, so oh, it was really wonderful. Nice. Um, and they're good costumes yeah, too. Yeah, so yeah, they're gorgeous. And they were yeah. they were lovely. Yeah. She she recreated a, a a Kate Moss something or a John Galliano outfit for me. It was wonderful. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, no no complaints there then, right? Yeah, that <laughs> none. Out. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's a question here about a uh, question for Lloyd. What's your weight? How is it influenced? Um, how what influence does it have on ice performance? Um, my I'm just under two hundred pounds at the moment. Um, I if I do a lot of lifts with Anastasia in shows, uh, my weight goes up because I 
you know, I don't need as much cardio, I just need power to lift. Um, and you don't need as much power to do the lifts that I have, but when you do shows, 10 times over 10 shows a week, let's say, you need to be strong because you get tired at some point, you know? Mm. Um, if I was competing again, I would have to drop my weight down to about 100, 175 pounds. I'd maybe have to lose 25 pounds or so because I would have too much muscle on my body and I would be exhausted when I get to do a free dance. So you'd have to lose some muscle because you wouldn't need that muscle for, for the lifts in the same way. You know, even if you're a pair skate, you don't need big, strong muscles the same way as when you're doing shows. You just need explosive, dynamic, and you need to be light. So right. definitely if I was doing competitions, I would have to drop my weight down. Otherwise, after 30 seconds, I'd say, get me off i'm done i'm done with the program leave i've hard. seen 30 seconds you can make up the rest of the program yourself <laughs> yeah you have to think of it a little bit like um whatever you choose to pack you have to carry you know yes. so yeah. it gets hard yeah. the, the longer the routine is yeah exactly <laughs> exactly um we're just going to scroll through a few very quickly now we apologize if we don't get to everyone's questions because we have to start wrapping uh, things up um Let's just see. I think there was one question. Uh, this is a question for ladies, I think. And I'm going to. Again, I, I don't have any experience in this. So, I mean, if anyone. <laughs> thank wants goodness. To give them. Yeah, thank goodness. Right. <laughs> I mean, I do, yeah. Um, how do you train and prepare for competitions during the period? Um, well, I mean, like, I guess, what, what can I say? I mean, you have to kind of go through life anyway you know no matter if if you're on your period or not and of course it'll happen um luckily mine were never um too bad and they're not too frequent but that's all it, that that's how i've been since i was young so i just um uh you know the the first day it might hurt a bit and you take a paracetamol or an advil and um yeah and just hope for the best really <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. But, I, I, it's one of those things where um, both as a skater and then as a coach, you sometimes work with um, with students who perhaps uh, suffer from symptoms more. Um, yeah. The unfortunate thing is, you you genuinely, as an athlete, a female athlete, um, you don't get to let up. You know, training is training yes. until uh, until the point where it's actually you physically can't move, and and you do occasionally come across women who experience pain that is that bad that they literally can't move but mm. you can you can usually see that because the the color goes from their face they're clammy they're sweaty so you can tell when someone's faking it yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. and as a, an athlete who's a former athlete who's sympathetic to having had to go through things similar so basically it's um there was one athlete now who was it um, somebody fantastically Olympic, um, not a female, but is about if you train as if uh, you have to win your gold medal on your worst day, then if you arrive at the Olympic and it's not your worst day, then hurrah, yeah. you, you're in, you know, you're yeah. already ahead yeah. of the game. So even on a bad day, try and do the best that you can on that day. And each time you, you know, come across that scenario, the more you just try to deal with it and find your ways through, the easier it will be if you ever happen to be at a competition and that happen, or you're, you know, you know, you watch the schedule and you're going, oh God, it's going to coincide, mm -hmm. um, or a few, it's just going to miss, whichever, but I'll be training, trying to peak just before, and I'll have to go through this. So if you, if you prepare yourself for it, every time that you're having to go through a period and you're having to train, do the best you can, yes. um, and uh, and you'll always feel then that that you have a better chance of doing better. Exactly. Yeah. Then you feel like you can, you know, do it no matter what. And yeah, that's very well put. Mm. Well, I'm I'm glad you two are here to answer that question because if someone <laughs> asked me that question and it was just it was me, it's a very valid question, really. But I yeah, want it, to say. Yeah, and, it would, uh, yeah. It, it's interesting because it brings up a good point, and I firmly believe that the best coaching teams involve both a man and a lady, as you have Marie who works with Vitaly, myself who works with Anastasia, mm -hmm. because you get both sides of things. I wouldn't I would struggle to know how to deal properly in this situation because I have no experience with such things so working with Anastasia we work with someone who can you know so 
for anyone wondering, yeah, having a man and a lady work together in a coaching team have often produced the most successful results in competitions. Mm -hmm. For sure, for ice dancing, most definitely, you get that that dual perspective. I mean, there are things that, um, I'm not saying that our students ever try and get, get away with things, but they'll sometimes be like odd questions which okay the period question can come across as a bit awkward but there are issues that gentlemen sometimes have to deal with if they're preparing to do a specific lift mm. and they are worried about what's going to happen to the crown I've jewels the when order. something <laughs> goes <lift>. wrong <laughs> Happens. Um, oh you know, so having having a gentleman's perspective on how to you know avoid uh, or deal with or make a, a compensatory move that's going to keep you safe. 100%. Yeah. Um, that only a guy can answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's so, so true. Yeah. Makes the best teams like that. Yeah. Um, just going to quickly get through to the end now. Mm. We've got to wrap things up. Um, thank you, Robin, for these kind remarks. Yeah, get a picture you, of the Robin. two of us. I will say that. We're actually having some great new artwork made for the channel that um, hopefully everyone who will enjoy when it is finished, hopefully today. Um, shout out to Stefano Caruso for watching the show. He was our guest last week and he's Stefano. given me the pointed down finger. So yeah, thank, thank you very much about this. What do you think about ice hockey? It's a very wild sport. It mm. is a very wild sport, but an amazingly entertaining sport. Um, I personally love watching it. You were American, so it's yeah, embedded in the culture. Very anaerobic. It's, yeah. it's yeah. very anaerobic. Yes. And it's like tag team in, out. Yeah. Like, then those pucks move so fast. Yeah. They wow. really do, yeah. And I'm from Michigan where ice hockey is very popular and um, we have a pretty good team, the Detroit Red Wings. So, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I always enjoyed ice hockey and I appreciate it as a sport because it's um, it's very, yeah, very hard and um, so very quick. Phenomenal athletes. Quick. Yes. Phenomenal athletes, yeah. 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 And, uh, yeah, hopefully we'll get to work with a hockey team one day because that can mm. be bigger skaters can bring great insight into skating skills and stuff to help develop hockey skaters. Victor skills. Kratz works with hockey skaters. Oh, yes. okay. For anyone yeah. wondering, Victor Kratz is a Canadian world champion ice dancer and uh, competed against you in the Olympics, right, Mariko? And uh, many other competitions. Yeah, he fell over. I stood up. <laughs> <laughs> He came fourth yeah. and I came 15th, so there you go, he's that much yeah. better than me. <laughs> maybe that's where you're going wrong, you should have played Zamboni and maybe you'd have been fourth. <laughs> it was yeah. a very good routine. <laughs> yeah, well, anyway, artwork for the channel, merchandise too. Yeah, that's what we're preparing because we had some questions about it, so we thought, why not? Anyway. You're going to owe me a t-shirt, you're going to owe me a t-shirt for I this. I will send you a t-shirt if you promise. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> Anyway, everyone, thank you for joining us on this live stream. If you have enjoyed the content we've put out, the video today, if you've enjoyed Marika participating, smash up the likes for us. It means a lot. And you can follow all of us on Instagram. I myself, Ice Coach Online, which is the channel's Instagram. We have at Stasia Olson and we have Marika's Ice Marika HP. So follow us all on Instagram if you want to keep up to date with what we're doing and leave us a comment below. Let us know what you think of the live stream and let us know, um, you know, what you want to see in the future in terms of content. Does anyone else have any closing comments? Marika, you've been... Oh, it's been so much fun. I don't think I've smiled this much <laughs> since my wedding day. My face is my hurting. My cheeks it's hurt. Great. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was just going to say, Marika, you've been wonderful. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you. Yes. You've answered every question beautifully. Yeah. And just so precise and I yeah we're, it was so wonderful to have you yeah hopefully we can get you on again in the future as well because I'm sure every we've enjoyed having you on and I'm sure other people have enjoyed having you on here as well so yeah and um, thanks so much guys um, tuning next week for the next uh, Q&A and get your questions ready we will announce soon uh, the next guest so thank you very much and see you next time bye guys See you, everyone. Mm -hmm.